Welcome back to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. Good to have you here. And with me, as usual, our expert, it's Motorhome Matt Sims. Hello, Keith. How are you doing? I'm fine. You too, Matt. Yeah, very well. Yeah, good to be here again. You might have noticed if you're watching on video, that's not just the two of us for this week. There's three. We we've, are hear no grown. evil, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Apart from Matt, who always speaks evil. No, 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 I didn't mean it. Uh, who's our special guest today, Matt? This is Jason Morsey. Hi, Jason. How are you doing? Hi, Matt. Yes, very well, thank you. He's a very good friend of mine from the north. Where are you from? Tell us where you're from, Jason. Uh, Tottington Motor Company, uh, so TMC Motorhomes up in uh, Manchester. Yeah, brilliant. Good to have you here. You vented all the way down. Certainly have, yeah. yes. <laughs> you're venturing back in a minute. <laughs> so, Jason, you kindly joined us today to share with me, I and mean, we've known each other a long time, uh, and we compare notes over dinner regularly in fact i think we do one next week aren't we we are um and looking forward to that but we compare notes on our on the industry and our experiences but jason uh, so you know at tottington they they sell motor homes and cars uh, and hire them as well um a bit like us down here uh, and we thought it'd be great to get jason's view on some of the stuff that we've been talking about over the last few months so what's your your current experience like of the industry um, well, new motorhome supply is still extremely difficult. Um, we've still got uh, customers that orders uh, motorhomes with us back in uh, the summer of 2021, uh, still not taken delivery. They've still not been built yet. Uh, they've been now rolled over by the manufacturers over into season 23. Um and uh, yeah, it's it's tough. It's very tough. Yeah, it is tough, isn't it? And we've got the show coming up at the NEC in a few weeks' time in October. Yes, uh, it's September still as we record this. And uh, what's what's gonna, what's going to be the visitor experience? Do you think with with stock and future availability? What's your um, I think the manufacturers are certainly working hard to make sure there's a good selection of stock mm-hmm. um, on the stands. I was speaking to one manufacturer only this week who, uh, you know, they were saying they've got 11 motorhomes on the on the actual uh, stand, um, which was a, which was not far off the full range. Um, so I, I think there'll be lots to see. Um, okay, good. I, I think the... You know, the issue will come around, uh, you know, if you're going to the show and you want to order something, the uncertainty around the pricing uh, and the delivery dates. I think that's going to be the real issue. So you say uncertainty around the pricing. What do you mean? Well, um, you know, we're being told at the moment as dealers that uh, for, for most manufacturers that due to the rising cost of the chassis uh, and indeed the, the components and the parts that make up the motorhomes, um, that they can't offer any price protection. So the forecasts at the moment are that, um, you know, the, the chassis in particular will keep rising. OK, so what you're saying is back to Brexit tariffs. The well, potential of prices, potentially you're going to buy it, and the price is going to go up before you pay for the buck at the, the end of it. I think it's a given. Wow, would you buy one, Keith? Well, I was just thinking on that basis. Uh, you know, I want if I want a motorhome, I go along, I go to my dealer. He wants or she wants to sell me uh, that motorhome and give the best service that he can. But Jason, as I understand it from what you've just said, I can order it. The dealer will sell it to me in good faith. You know, I, I, I'll I'll put up some money as a, a deposit to show my good faith. But actually, it's the manufacturer who might come back and change the terms of the contract that I've already entered into with the dealer. Am I thinking right on that basis? Um, I, I think the actual contract um, as, as, as such is more, um, you know, will be rubber stamped that there is no price protection at the, sh- you know, and, and unless some manufacturers uh, are, are running some show offers, for instance, and one of those show offers potentially could be price protection. Wow, we've never uh, seen that before. You know, we're hoping as dealers that that might be the case. So you can go along, let's... Forget about motorhomes. If I was going along to buy a car, I could go along and buy a car, but the dealer can say to me, well, you know, I'm advertising it at £25,000, but actually it might be £35,000 by the time you get it. As I understand it, that's what you've just said. Are people going to buy on that basis? Um, Well, you know, as I was travelling this morning, I took a call from the office, exactly that customer wanted to order a new motorhome, and that's what we've had to tell the customer. That you know we will we will quote the price today, but we can't guarantee that will be the price at the point of when that motorhome is built and ready for delivery. And what was the response of the potential customer? Uh, the customers paid the deposit. 
So they've gone ahead. They, they've gone ahead and ordered. Because yes. the desire to have the motorhome overcomes the uncertainty. Yes. Yeah, and that's a big driver, isn't it? Yes. And we've had we've practiced this already, as I say. I refer to Brexit, you know, that distant memory, and and the, there was a risk of tariffs. And I remember the show where people were ordering on the basis that this could go up, you could see a ten percent increase, and it will be Brexit driven. So we we are kind of used to it, and it's it's like COVID, isn't it? Lockdown. We if it happened again, we we'd know what to expect. We've we've done the dress rehearsal. We're prepared. Uh, and I don't think it will happen again. Let's hope not. Uh, but I think with pricing on motorhomes, it, we've been there before, um, and and people know, and I think accept mm. that this is the reality. And the other issue, the price, but also when will it arrive? You know, the dealers will give when you will give a an expected delivery date based on what you know now, and but that could change, couldn't it? Absolutely. And and I think, you know, it's important to get across that this is across leisure as a whole. It's caravans, it's static homes, it's yeah. motorhomes. Um, you know, it's everybody's in the same position. Yeah. So as a consumer, that desire to have that motorhome uh, or a caravan, whatever you, you're buying, should trump um, perhaps the uncertainty of the manufacturers. Because as we've been discussing for the last year, really, Matt, uh, this purchase isn't usually going to be a depreciating purchase you are making an investment not just in your holidays but perhaps for the future as well no guarantees no. but actually the market isn't as unstable as some might have you believe no and we and jason and i both know and both seen how used prices have just risen and and continue to rise you know we could buy a motorhome today and probably in march it would be worth more wouldn't it Next well, year. we, you know, we like most dealers, we've been busy buying back motorhomes that customers purchased from us. We're seeing customers that purchased in 2020. Um, we're actually giving them their money back that they paid for the motorhome today. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I've got a customer in 2018 who mm. just done that. And mm. they've had their holidays, they've enjoyed their motorhome, and they're getting the money back that they paid. They've had four for. years of holidays. Mm. Yes. And, yeah. and, and actually, they get all their money back. And with your customers now, uh, Jason, how, how are they paying for things? Because this is a finance episode. We will be uh, hearing later on from an expert talking about how you can finance your dream. Um, but as a dealer, how have you seen people coming in? Are they demanding finance because of the financial uncertainty or, or are they buying in different ways? Um, well, if we just look at the last few weeks, um, out of the uh, sales that we've seen over the last few weeks, um, you know, there's been very, very little uh, request for finance. Um, they've been uh, cash purchasers, uh, often with a part exchange. Um, so, um, you know, that's that's good to see. Because inflation now running at just below 10%. It's taken a little bit of dip in this September, but not much. But I suppose if you've got savings, you're thinking, hang on a second, I've got £50,000 saved up, or I've taken um, my pension um, tax-free payment, I don't want to see that being eaten away. Eh? No, and at ten percent, it's now worth forty-five. I'm going to spend it. Yeah, invest it in something that's going to go up in price, yeah. and that's a challenge, isn't it, for for many um, as the prices go up. But then there, of course, there are many who do need some finance. I mean, that you're not seeing them in your business. I think you know people are holding back a little bit at the moment, um, but there are undoubtedly people that will look at the price at the show. The screen prices, as, we, as we've said before, and that I think they're going to be in for a shock. You know, it was sixty thousand a few years ago, and now it's going to be seventy-five <laughs> easily. Well, I'm seeing average price increase on new products is running at around twenty percent. Well, there we are. Yeah, exactly, and that's going to happen again, isn't it, into next year? It's going to stay. And you have to understand the manufacturers aren't necessarily profiteering on this. No. Their raw, raw materials have gone up. You know, if they're, they're getting the wires or, or getting the steel or the aluminium for the, the chassis, all those prices have gone up and they're paying more to their suppliers. So don't think it's profiteering. It's not. No. They're just reacting to their supply chain and having to pass it on. You know, I think many manufacturers now reach the point where they have no choice but to pass it on. Uh, they've swallowed it, haven't they, for a while, at the beginning of this mm. chapter we're in, uh, and, uh, yeah, and prices were fixed and were guaranteed, but that is dissolving, isn't it? We're seeing, or you were telling me how one manufacturer started, you know, their tone of their letters has changed from, yep, price fixed, no problem, to can't guarantee the price anymore. Very much so. Yeah. It's but, but it must be said, the dealer will do their best for you. 
Of course. Yeah, we're in, well, we're in business. You know, we're on the end of this. Yeah. yeah, we've got mouths to feed. And and on that, Jason, what you know, what's what is the future for the businesses at the front end of this? Yours and mine are family owned and run businesses. You know, we're family and friends teams. We're we're small SME businesses. Uh, with a team of people with mortgages to pay and rent to pay, you know, and, and, and at the end of every month we look at the payroll and, you know, there are real people on the end of that. And that's the case for most of this industry, isn't it? What, at risk of crystal ball gazing, what's your view, do you think, of the future over the next 18 months, two years, that short term for those businesses in our industry? Mm. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased that... Um my business, like yours, Matt, is a diverse business, mm-hmm. and um, you know we we have lots of lots of things going on in our business. I would be extremely concerned um, if if my business was just new or, or indeed used motorhome sales. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, yeah, I'd be extremely concerned. Yeah. The fixed overhead doesn't change. No, and. Um, you know that's the, the 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 supply and the supply issues. I feel will be continuing certainly, um, you know, well into the second half of next year. Yes, undoubtedly. And I think higher. We both have higher business you know, operations as part of our offering. I think that's in for a boom next year. I'm feeling very buoyant about it for 2023, given the inquiries we've had. Mm. Uh, and I think the price of new, the purchase price and the price of used will mean people consider hiring one instead. Do you agree? I do agree. And, um, you know, I think f- certainly thinking about hire and looking at our our businesses and, um, you know, the asset cost, um, as we see in the asset cost rising, it, it rises for us as well, um, mm. operating hire fleets. And, you know, I think my advice would be that if you are considering hiring, then book early, um, try and lock the price in. Yeah. Um, because as the asset cost is going up, no doubt the actual, the, the, you know, the higher fee will go up. Yeah. And it's very unusual for hire companies to put the price up once you've booked, isn't it? It is. Unlike yeah. when you're buying one. Yes. <laughs> the sound yeah. of it. And it must be said as well, if you've got that motorhome uh, sitting at home and uh, you haven't considered getting in touch with a business such uh, as uh, Matt's, uh, then uh, you could make some money out of uh, your motorhome you by, by hiring it out. And, and of course, uh, as you said yourself, with this problem with supply and demand, if you want that motorhome holiday, actually next year it looks like the only way to get it, if you haven't got a motorhome already, or even be. if you've got one on order, is to hire. We have a customer at, at this moment who is in a hired motorhome from us with one on order which they'll get next year and it's their i think it's their third holiday they've hired because they can't they have to wait for their own one um we're yeah. in exactly the same position we've got customers that have hired this season um just because theirs hasn't been delivered but they'd plan the holidays yeah so. yeah it's an interesting time well jason thanks ever so much for heading south it's You're been welcome. great to have good you to on see you. really good to look inside your crystal ball <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of, it's a mixed bag isn't it it is we don't want it, it to be doom and gloom and it's not we're actually yeah you know, we're both very excited about next year it's a challenge and it's a bumpy road but it's such a great pastime isn't it and we both get to do it ourselves from time to time um sometimes with the wives and kids we do uh, we do <laughs> <laughs> we promised them the odd break so, Jason, thanks for joining us on the Motorhome Matt podcast. Uh, this episode is all about finance, a little bit more uh, about that uh, as we uh, go on. If you want to live that dream in that motorhome, you've been hearing how you should go about it. Stay tuned for more on finance here on the Motorhome Matt podcast. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. Here's our expert. It's Motorhome Matt Sims. Hey, Keith. How you doing? Fantastic. And I tell you what, today's uh, podcast is all about finance, financing yeah. your purchase of a, a motorhome and all the intric- intricacies. I can't even say it. No. All the intricacies uh, of that purchase, buying into your dream. Making the dream affordable. And talking about making the dream affordable and just looking at the dream, the big show is at the NEC in October, isn't it? A few um, weeks away. Is it the Motorhome and Caravanning show, is it called? Motorhome and Caravan show, yep. Yep. Uh, we have got two ways where you can get tickets. Way number one is we can get you a discount on the tickets. Uh, hey, all you've got to do is go onto the show website, not Motorhome, Matt. No, mcshow.co.uk. And uh, when you buy your ticket, put in where the little box, it says discount code EX1. Is that right? That's correct. EX, the number one. So Echo, X-Ray, and a number one. And you will receive a discount. A few pounds off. You're welcome.
Fantastic. Pay the electricity bill with it. Uh, OK, then, Matt, there's a second way, a more exciting way of getting a ticket, and you don't have to pay a penny. No, you can win them. We're giving them away. We've still got pairs to give away. Uh, this is the last... Last week we're going to announce this uh, because then we're going to start announcing our winners. You can do that by going to our website, motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. Now we want you to there record or enter your funny, sad, but memorable uh, motorhome caravan or camper van story. Make us laugh, make us cry. Had a couple that have made us shed a tear, haven't we? Uh, quite a few have made us laugh uh, and whatever your story is we want to hear it if you're brave enough to record it hit the orange button record your story and we will play them out on the podcast uh, and we will pick the best we're we're sort of making up the rules as we go along with this aren't we but the best makes us laugh makes us have an emotional response is that fair i think that's very fair and when we say best we don't necessarily mean best. We mean the one, as you say, <laughs> that makes us laugh uh, or makes us cry or makes us do those things after a bottle of wine, eh, Matt? Get careful. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already picked one winner, haven't we, Matt? Who was that? We have. It was the lucky Donna. Donna submitted her story, which I have to say was rather moving. And Donna shared her story as to how her caravan holiday saved her life. Really is a remarkable story. Yeah. Uh, winner number two is Scott. We've got Scott's stories here. We're going to share it between us. Congratulations, uh, Scott. Yes, as you like to call in the trade, we're going to ping pong. Me and Matt are ping ponging, <laughs> whiff waffing. Oh dear, not again. <laughs> okay then, uh, Matt, uh, you, sh are you going to dive in or shall I? Go on, after you. Okay. Scott says, just a quick little story for you, as I really do hate the sound of my own voice. Scott, we wanted to hear you. Get You should have gone online. But anyway, about five years ago, my wife and I were going to buy a caravan so that we could stop over when we were travelling around the country, delivering things that we make. We went to a place in Leeds that had a good selection of used vans and started checking them out to find a layout that would suit us. After the first dozen or so were just too small, we're talking about caravan here, we spotted a tag axle bailey and headed inside. Wow, we couldn't believe how much room there was. Even the bed looked luxurious. So I barged past my wife, climbed on it, laid down and then it all went horribly wrong. It seems that when it had been parked, the legs at the back of the caravan hadn't been lowered. Have you any idea how long a tag axle caravan is when it's pointing up to the sky? They did a wheelie in the caravan. He got in bed, the front of it went hoi hoi. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Scott goes on to say my wife was quick thinking and ran to the front of the caravan. You can imagine that uphill. Uh, this image is best presented if you insert the running sound effect from a cartoon right here. The front end shot down with such speed that I wonder to this day if we did any chassis damage. Boing. Needless to say, this really put me off caravans and hence we're going to buy our first motorhome at the NEC. I've actually done that. Have you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got in the caravan, went to the back just to grab something on a hill as well. And uh, I didn't realise it had been unhitched from the car by a friend of mine who was being very helpful. And I promptly fell over in the back and ended up pegged to the back window. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those Garfield things people used to put in the back of the car. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. And it's, then it started rolling down the grassy hill as well. It's Oh, my goodness. Anyway, to, I'm still here. Cue the Benny Hill theme. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Well done, Scott. Great story. Made us chuckle. Pair of tickets going to you. We'll be in touch. And remember, we're not paying for your travel. We're not paying for your accommodation, but we are giving you two tickets. So just one more time, how do people win as they've heard Scott's story? Yeah, you can enter. Go to the website, motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. Hit the orange button and record your story. Or if you'd like, Scott, you're not brave enough to hear your own voice, you can enter the words on the page and press submit. We really would like to hear your voice. And also, uh, when you're putting your details in, tell us where around the UK you are from. Now, we're talking about finance in this podcast, uh, Matt, and you've been talking to somebody who's a real expert. I did. I caught up with an old friend of mine. This is Steve. Just to ask him a bit more about how leisure vehicle finance works as people head to the show uh, and when I think they're in for a bit of a shock with some of the screen prices. Steve, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm great, great to have you on board. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know you've done 
hundreds of hours of Zoom over the last few years. So this is a <laughs> happy place for you. Thank you for giving us some of your time uh, and for sharing your expertise with our listenership. We've got the big NEC show coming up, haven't we, in October, just a few weeks away. Uh, yeah, I know you guys have a stand. Uh, we'll come to that in a bit. We'll find out where people can come and say hello. But I think people going to the show are going to be in for a bit of a shock. The screen prices are going to be significantly more than they might have seen before. Uh, I recall, you know, we were taking photos of screen prices back in 2019. I think we're going to see 20, 30, 40 percent more on some of those prices this year and and finance of course is a great way isn't it of people uh being able to afford that screen price um but how do people go about maybe they've not considered finance before um how do they go about finding finance and how you know how does it work okay well i suppose the first thing i'd say is i absolutely agree with you about the screen the screen prices at the show there is going to be some shocks there Supply, because of the, the war in the Ukraine and, of course, COVID as well, has meant that there's been some, some challenges on supply, not, not only of motorhomes, camper vans, caravans, but the, the, whole, the whole vehicle sector. You know, you'll, you'll have heard this on cars and we see it on commercial vehicles as well. There's some real challenges around supply and that, as you rightly say, has driven up prices significantly. So there's no doubt there's going to be some, some, uh, some large increases this year. But in terms of will customers be surprised? Yes, I think they will. But in terms of how they can finance a, a, a motorhome, it's pretty straightforward, Matt, if I'm honest with you. Um, of course, people can speak to the dealer. If it's a main dealer, they will likely have their own finance option available through um, one of the main um, funding suppliers um, or manufacturer finance scheme. But through the likes of ourselves as a finance broker, there's many, many solutions that we can provide. Um, I'll give you our details later in terms of our website and how customers can contact us. But finance on a leisure vehicle is commonplace, particularly on more expensive vehicles where you know, most people don't have the sort of outlay that's required to buy a, a, a new or a, you know, you, you know what the numbers can be on these vehicles, you know. 50, 60, 100,000 pound plus quite easily um, on, on motorhomes and camper vans are, are more expensive at the moment as well. So yes, it's finding solutions which perhaps are low deposit options for customers, managing a, a manageable monthly payments is, is critical. And it's always useful to go into one of these shows knowing roughly what a monthly budget uh, can, can look like for, for a potential customer. Um, and we've got through our website, we, a customer can go on and have a look at uh, how much they can borrow and how much that monthly payment equates to. So they can go to a show or go into a dealer knowing roughly what they've got to play with. Can they buy a 40 grand unit? Can they buy a 60, 70 grand unit? These are the monthly payments. Is it affordable? It's a fairly straightforward process. There's lots of options out there. And um, we'd be delighted to give advice to uh, to customers. So you are a broker. So just explain to us what that means compared to you know the other players in the market. Absolutely. So two types of way to transact, really. So you can go direct to a funder that funds leisure vehicles. Clearly, many dealers are affiliated to one or maybe um, a couple of particular funders directly. Um, but of course, the customer is then restricted to the options that the dealer is offering, unless the, the, fun, the customer takes it upon themselves to look at, the, look at the market outside of the dealer's arrangements. We've got a huge panel of funders. So we are a broker. We work with a panel of funders. We refer the customer to the funder that we believe is most suitable on our panel. And we've got over 60 funders on panel at the moment, many of which fund leisure vehicles of all shapes and sizes and all customer circumstances as well, which is important. Clearly, customers are looking for different solutions. Some customers might have extremely strong credit and looking for the very keenest deals. Some customers looking to purchase might have a slightly more challenging uh, credit, uh, credit profile, which needs a different solution. But with a whole of market choice, we can provide customers hopefully the best solution tailored for them. Brilliant, and that and that's well, that's key, isn't it? Having that flexibility as a broker, 
unlike being you know, Black Horse is a brand we see in almost every dealership. Um, mm. You know, they're tied with Lloyd's to their panel, but you're able, you're saying to go, you say 80 different lenders, is that right? 60 funders. 60, not sorry, of, 60. Not all of those are suited to their vehicles. That's, a, that's across our entire proposition at uh, right. Creative Funding Solutions. But we have many, many funders that do fund leisure vehicles of all types. Mm -hmm. um, and we can find the best solution depending on the customer's profile, the profile of the finance, the vehicle, whether it's new or used. There's, there's several nuances which um, determine which funder might be the most appropriate for the customer. And one of them is left-hand drive as well, isn't it? Some funders I know don't fund a left-hand drive motorhome, um, which I've always found. Many. many. It's odd that, even though it's got UK plates on it, um, but you're able to do that. It's horse boxes, well, I know from my own experience of working with you, you fund horse boxes too. And caravans, of course. You know, we're talking motorhomes, but, but caravans too, and camper vans as well. Very much so. So our leisure proposition for us incorporates motorhomes, camper vans, caravans, and, and as you say, horse boxes as well. And we, we fund um, hundreds of units of each of those. But yeah, we've got a strong proposition across the entire leisure space. And uh, I know we'll discuss it later, but we're looking forward to sort of um, showing, showcasing those um, those products at the, at the show, at the show um, yeah. in October. And do you fund a vehicle that someone's converted themselves, that someone's looking to buy? So it's not a factory conversion, but a but a kind of a backstreet conversion, let's call it that. Yeah, I suppose particularly camper vans would perhaps be the most, the, the product more in that space. Um, yes, we've got options there. They are more niche options. Um, we have got one or two sort of HP providers. We do have other loan options as well, which customers can avail themselves of. Um, but yes, we can we can fund um, yeah, something unlike, for example, a VW California that comes off the production line as a camper. We can we can fund post production line conversions as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So interest rates are on the climb at the moment, and you know we're we're surrounded by news of you know, increased cost of living and so on. What impact is that having on the proposition of finance for the consumer at the moment? Well, there is a, there's there's an upward trend in, in rates. There's, there's no yeah. question about that. And we're seeing that across all our sectors. We deal with a large number of uh, consumer uh, funders, which would be suitable, of course, to leisure vehicles. But in other areas that we work um, uh, with at Creative, we have a, lot, a large number of corporate funders as well for businesses. We're seeing those rates increase as well. Interestingly, at the moment, obviously, there's, there's a lot of talk in the news and in the papers regarding uh, your cost of living and energy bills, etc. But in, in terms of whether that's sort of stymieing the market, at, at present, we're not seeing that. We're seeing the leisure sector continuing to be uh, buoyant at the moment. Now, maybe things will kick in in the next few months and, we'll, and we will see a downturn perhaps. But at present, um, we're not, not seeing that. Um, of course, where pe people that have got savings, of course, that are, will now be starting to see a little greater um, interest coming through on their savings. Maybe yeah. people will now be less willing to use those savings and perhaps put them to a to a high purchase agreement or, 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 to, or to fund a vehicle perhaps outright. Um, there's been a uh, in the past. There's been uh, people's perception has perhaps been the interest rates are so low on my savings. I'm not going to leave them in savings. I'm going to use them for a, for a purchase of a of a motorhome or whatever it may be. But as they yeah. start to creep up. Perceptions may may change, or, yeah. or, or, or the thought process may may change in that regard. And you mentioned you use the word there, higher purchase. Now we're used to, you know, if people listening have bought a car, um, a PCP where you know, it's a monthly payment um, and a personal contract plan. And is that right? Is that what it stands for? Personal contract purchase. To, purchase. To be exact. Yeah. Personal close, contract purchase. Close. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, there's a you know, there's a monthly payment and there's a balloon at the end. Yes. That's now that's now available for motems, although only recently, isn't it? In, in the last few years, really, has that become an option? Can you talk us through the ways that people can finance a motem? So, you know, size of deposit, is, there, is it just a monthly payment and you're done? Or is there a balloon at the end? What are the options with a, with a leisure vehicle? Yeah, um, 
all of those and more. I mean, but <laughs> I suppose I start by saying the, the by far the most popular um, arrangement remains a straight high purchase arrangement. We we, we fund probably I don't know eighty to ninety percent of, of uh, leisure vehicles we fund would be on that basis, um, yeah. and you can fund up to a, a ten year term, which is more generous than. Um, vast majority of the market for for example a car or a commercial vehicle uh, commercial vehicle yeah the, the, the leisure products have the extended term which is going to be particularly of use uh, going forward as uh, as you rightly said the prices are increasing so it's getting more expensive in order to keep that monthly payment manageable and that's where you're making a monthly payment and then you know you you at the end of it you've paid it off there is no bubble to pay off or balloon to pay off at the end is there there's no balloon. There's, that's just a standard higher purchase fixed monthly payments. And, and that's an important point, actually, fixed monthly payments. Yeah. The, the way the interest rates are going at the moment, who, who knows what will happen in, in years to come, that you know that there's going to be no change on that higher purchase uh, arrangement. So, you know, if interest rates do go through the roof, um, that monthly payment will be fixed for the for the duration of the agreement. So that that's not been something that people have really considered much the last few years where interest rates have been low for so long, but that's now perhaps yeah. becoming a consideration that there hasn't, hasn't been around for, for some years. Yeah. And that's about budgeting, isn't it? Each month you, you're, you're the same payment every month. Absolutely. Um, yeah. There are, there are plenty of other options as well. There are, um, you can do a shorter period with a balloon payment as well. Um, and that balloon payment um, is based on the future value of the vehicle. It's based on what the customer's um, annual mileage is likely to be. There are a number of products out there uh, now with a balloon payment on, on the leisure vehicles. But even with the balloon payment, the monthly payments are not as uh, as low as they would be on the straight 10-year agreement. Um, mm. So probably because of that is the main reason um, we still see the vast majority of our business done on a straight high purchase arrangement as opposed to a, a balloon payment. Yeah. Now, an important point here is you mentioned that you can have a 10-year agreement. Most people don't keep a leisure vehicle for 10 years. It, it, it's feasible and possible, isn't it, to you know have it for a year and sell it. Uh, could you just explain how that works with the finance? Yeah. So if the customer uh, wishes to settle after a, a shorter period of time and the finance is, uh, is over, get a settlement figure from... Uh, from the funder um, and that'll be the amount required to settle now um, without going into too much detail for a consumer finance arrangement which is for an individual which is likely to be the vast majority of, of motorhome or camper van purchases um, the finance is protected by the consumer credit act and they there will be set rules where um, the customer will not be penalised um, by more than a small amount if they settle the finance early. Very, very regulated. So the customer will not be heavily penalised should they wish to settle the finance early, which is an important point. Very, very different to non-regulated finance for companies, for example, where, the set, where for early settlement, the penalties could be far higher. Yes. So the customer is reasonably well protected under the uh, under the consumer regulation for settling uh, if they wish to settle the finance early, get a settlement figure. If they wanted to sell the vehicle, um, if it's on a finance arrangement, um, potentially the, the, the funder could settle off the existing finance as part of the deal or um, the, the, the customer's buyer would settle the finance off and take title to the vehicle that way. Um, but getting a settlement figure from the funder would be the first stage. And, you know, that's a very straightforward process by speaking to the funder and, and getting the figure. In fact, if you've transacted through ourselves as a, as a, a broker like ourselves as creative, we can, we can take the strain and get those figures for customers directly in there. And help them through the process there. Yeah, and that's a fairly quick and simple process, isn't it, to go through? Very much so, especially if you, you know, we, uh, we we concentrate on this point quite often, which is using a broker will take the strain of the liaison with the with the funder. We have so many customers that say to us, "It's impossible to get through to their bank, to their to their funder." You're at the end of a call centre for hours on end. <laughs> The other day, I heard an example. You know, some some uh, some businesses are still using COVID as a, as a reason why service levels are poor, and, and we struggle to get our heads around that one slightly. Yeah. If I'm honest, yeah. Um, 
but um, without wanting to go off your, your topic of your initial question, it, it's an important point, not only for settlement figures, but for other, the whole transaction is that we can, um, uh, you know, one stop shop and we'll, we'll take all the strain of customers not having to be on the end of a phone for an hour and a half for a settlement figure. Yeah. Yeah. I actually asked a few people some questions or asked them to ask some questions about finance on a motorhome. And okay. it, somebody said, well, where would I even start? to get finance on a motor how would people start you know, where would they go to research motorhome finance i mean if you go walk into a dealer they're going to be tied potentially to a provider uh a, often that's black horse or we see other names around and maybe you guys um you know, but how how does somebody start when it comes to finance yeah, I mean, so you're right. If somebody goes into a main dealer, they are almost certain. Um, I'd be amazed these days if if the funding conversation doesn't come up. And obviously, of course, it's part of a dealer's process to talk to a customer about how they're going to fund the vehicle. Of course, yeah. um, um, online is obviously, of, of course, a great way to start. Um, loads of information online about funding mode terms. I'll, I'll clearly give our, our website a plug at www.motorhome.finance, which is our dedicated site. Loads yes. of information on there, which includes a calculation tool as well, actually. Um, it's, it's very straightforward. Customer just puts in the amount they wish to borrow over what period. They give us a small indication of what their credit rating they, they feel is like from excellent to, to not so great. Um, and from there, they can put in some details. They can contact us by phone, um, by email. They can actually even do a full application online if, if they wish to. Um, you know, we're, we're not the only uh, broker that, that, that does that. Of course, there's lots of choice out there in, in the marketplace. Yeah. But the website is web, website is certainly a, a great place to start um, to build not only for a quote, but to build up your knowledge of the products that are available to to, to leisure customers. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's not difficult to 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 get information about funding motors. No, that's for sure. but it's worth noting, isn't it, for the listener? They don't have to take the finance from the dealer. They may choose to because that may be the best fit for them. But they don't have to. They are free to go out to the market to a company like yours. And, and seek your help to make the purchase. Is that fair? That is absolutely fair, yes. Yeah. And, and that, hap that, that happens on a daily basis for us. Um, many, many customers come to us um, because they, you know, they, they've, they, they, they have researched themselves. They, they haven't just taken the dealer's offering as the definitely the best offering. They, they've researched the market. And on many occasions, we've been able to help the customer with a, with a better solution, um, a quicker solution, and and often a um, uh, you know, a better priced solution as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, and certainly that's true, isn't it? When people say, "Well, I can just you know go and get a bank loan or a Tesco loan at the till," almost these days, you pick up the leaflet, fill it in. But the, you can. can you explain the big difference between somebody taking a loan like that or using a credit card to finance a purchase? Um, possibly remortgaging that's another way that people can yeah and that's a very viable way but yes. how is motorhome finance different i know you have a very set of bespoke uh, products and an insight and understanding into the leisure vehicle market you know and, and someone could say to you it's an auto trail apache 700 you would know what that is whereas you know tesco bank and the call center are gonna have not a clue but what's the big difference steve between motorhome finance specific finance and the other forms of borrowing that are available to you know people day to day yeah absolutely uh, so in answer to your question yes you could go on to you you could get a personal loan um uh, tesco's and other supermarkets money supermarket there's there's thousands of options yeah. out there as you know um but bear in mind of course course that most um personal loans uh have a have a cap of twenty five thousand pounds uh, as a maximum lend also uh, most will have a cap of five-year term as well so um some will do a little longer i've seen six and seven years these days but in terms of a, you know seventy five hundred thousand pound lend over 10 years that's not going to be a personal loan type solution 
Um, if somebody's buying, if somebody only wants to fund a balance, they, they've got a large deposit, for example, and only want to, to fund £10,000 over five years as a top up for the purchase, yeah, that's a viable option um, uh, uh, for that. But larger sums requiring funding over a longer period to make the monthly payments affordable are not, uh, the personal loan is not going to be the um, always the best route there, that, that's for sure. No, and and the big, I guess the big thing is that the the finance, the motone finance is pegged to the vehicle, isn't it? As the security, whereas Absolutely. a loan is pegged to you, the individual. The the vehicle is irrelevant to the lender. Correct. Yes, it would be an unsecured, fully unsecured personal loan if you went to a, to a Tesco, for example. Yes, yes. Um, whereas a high purchase is always secure. the the funder um, always owns the vehicle. This this is no different to a car or other or other HP financing. The funder owns the vehicle until that last payment is made, and then the yeah. title transfers to to the customer. Uh, yeah. But that's that, that's common. That's common practice. Yeah. Um, you mentioned secured finance as well on on property. Now this is a this is another option. Um, of course, as it's secured on someone's residential property, that's not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, of course, they they would perhaps choose a loan or higher purchase route before that. But if somebody wants to um, do a secured loan on property, you can do that, of course, over a much longer period, you know, 20, 25 years potentially. Um, yeah. And we do do some of, we do do some of that. Um, but, of course, there, are, there is legal paperwork involved in that. There is a charge taken over uh, somebody's residential property in doing so. Um, but for some people, it is a good solution. You might, you know, often people who have little or no mortgage, their house is unencumbered. They don't mind, um, you know, putting a hundred hundred thousand pound charge, for example, against their property to fund over a long period of time for sort of the motorhome of their dreams. Then, um, then it, it is a solution available um, yeah. out there, and we do do and, some of it. But they take time to set up as well, don't they? It's it's certainly not as quick a process. Perhaps, perhaps less time than you might think, but but there is a process involved uh, because there's there's charges, there's legal documentation. Um, and of course, it would need to be credit underwritten as well. Yeah. Um, so for those reasons, and the fact that obviously a lot of people just don't want to have to secure a vehicle on their residential property, um, it's nowhere near as popular as the high purchase choices that we have. But, no. but it, it, it's, it's worth a mention, certainly. Yeah. Now going back to the term, you know, I mentioned the 10-year thing, and most people own a motorhome maybe one, three, four years, but you can sell it though, can't you? And just you know, pay the finance off. You're not tied to own the vehicle for 10 years. That's just the term, isn't it, of the finance lend, which of course brings the monthlies down. Absolutely, yeah. So, so yeah. the customers can, can settle and uh, sell that vehicle at any point in the agreement, um, yeah. uh, no problem whatsoever. Um, but it, it is purely an extended term for, to make, for, for budgeting purposes. And what about overpayments? Are they... What does an overpayment do? Explain that because some people misunderstand the impact an overpayment makes. So, you know, you, you come into a few thousand pounds and decide to pay that into the finance. What what does that do to the agreement? So you can set so the, the rules are with, with, with most funders, you can settle up to eight thousand pounds or, or part or part settle, of course, um, up to eight thousand pounds per annum without penalty. What happens to the monthly payments or the term? What's the impact? So um, um, many funders give you give the customer the option. So you can either reduce the term and keep those monthly payments the same, yeah. um, or the monthly payments can uh, reduce and the, the agreement can continue to run for whatever the current remaining period of the finance would have been. So yeah. if that makes sense. So that most there's one or two nuances with particular funders. And that is a classic case where, you know, if that is a driver for the customer, what happens in this situation and I want to be able to do this, yes. then we know through the panel which which funder is likely to be more suited to that, that scenario. Where, of course, yeah. for one funder through a dealer, you're perhaps you're a little restricted. It's either that process or you have no other option. And for me, I mean, we've worked with you in the past and that's been the biggest benefit is that uh, before you start being able to discuss how how do you think this is going to play out over time? How long are you planning to keep the finance running? How long are you keeping plan to keep the motorhome for? Yeah, that's for me, my, my experience where working with a broker 
has been unique compared to funding it through a dealer because you've got that flexibility and certainly that, that's what you guys have offered us in the past which has been great a big benefit of working um with a broker Stephen, and we had a few other questions as well if i may um mm. what happens if you default on a payment um okay so default on a payment so that i suppose I'd, I'd, I'd quantify that slightly if if a customer is unable to make a monthly payment yeah. um then as with all these things, uh, and this is what the, the, the FCA would say, and this is certainly what we would say as a broker as well, the key is for the customer to keep the funder in the loop of their circumstances. Yes. Um, d- 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 if the customer doesn't pay, doesn't pick up the phone, there's no communication, then that's a problem. The funder will be concerned. There's starting some that you probably get the customer's probably going to start to get some difficult phone calls and letters through the post. If a customer's in difficult circumstances, speak to the funder, explain the situation. Most funders try to be amenable in, in, in difficult circumstances um, and will arrange perhaps a payment plan or or give advice on how it's best to catch up if a customer does go into arrears. Because it can be quite um, scary, can't it, as a consumer, when if you find yourself in that place. And, and again, my own experience of working with a broker is they will work with you to really help you remodel and, and find a way through you know, that tricky time. Um, and it was certainly for me would be a big thumbs up for using a broker. Um, and, you know, as you say, you're not just in a queue in a call center. You can actually go and speak to the person that, you know, you might have their mobile number um, and have a real conversation about it. That Yes, you know, that's a big benefit. Um, Definitely. We, we, we'd encourage a customer, but certainly a customer that came through um, creative for their finance. If if um, if they felt that they were unable to manage their payments, speak to us straight away. With, with us, all our customers would have a, a dedicated contact point that they could get hold of quickly in that situation. Um, and we could liaise with the funder and, and, and try and help out as, as much as we could. Um, yeah. So you're at the show, Stephen. Just tell us quickly then. Um, mm-hmm. You've got a stand at the NEC. Uh, yes. You're in Hall 19, stand number three. Is that right? 19, 19.03 is our, yeah. is our stand for me. Yes, so we're, we're, look, we're looking forward to it. See us at the stand, of course, at the show. Yeah. They can look at uh, www.motorhome.finance, just .finance. A lot of people think a, a .co.uk at the end of that, but that's not the case. Just very, very simply, www.motorhome.finance. We don't have a call centre, and we're, we're, we're glad we don't have a call centre. We go through to one, one of a couple of uh, our... Uh, are brilliant people at the end of the phone. They would then um, assess the customer in terms of whereabouts they are in the country. We get somebody to put a call into them. That might be to take a finance proposal. It might just be, they might just want to talk through options available, similar to what we've um, what we've done here today. Um, but we try and keep it. You could perhaps argue a bit old school, but but um, but personable certainly. Yeah. Um, but for those that don't have time or don't necessarily want that phone call and want the technology to be able to put a full application through, um, there's the technology to do that as well. Customers can put in all their details um, if they wish, all the vehicle details they're purchasing, full application, and then we'll give them a call. And um, Stephen, should people do this before they go to the show? So we're going to the show. Should be be like buying a house where we get geared up before we go? Or is it a case of go to the show, see what you want to find and buy and then, and then come to you. What, what order should people do it in? Uh, what I would suggest is um, it's important for somebody to understand their budget at the very least, I would say, right. before, yeah. before the show. So um, our web, the, the quote tool, as I mentioned on our website, so how, if, I, if I borrowed 40,000, if I wanted to buy a 50,000 motor, pound motor over 10 years, what's that going to cost me a month? Is that within my budget? Okay, so we can start looking at vehicles in that sort of price point. That's that's a good place to start. Um, if somebody wants to see if they could get, um, you know, finance on not a particular vehicle, but uh, um, let's say they want to buy a, a fifty thousand pound motorhome, um, they want to see if they could be approved on their credit profile. We'd be happy to do that in advance of the show as well, so they can. Yeah. Um, Go to the show knowing that funding is available for them fully. Uh, we can do that as well. Or, of course, people at the show can come and see us on stand. We'll be all geared up to um, take finance proposals and talk customers through their options on stand. Fantastic. Stephen, thank you ever so much for sharing your insights. It's been really, really interesting. 
uh, and great to have you on the podcast. Thank you. No problem at all. I much appreciate it, Matt. Thank you. That was Stephen Blake, a good friend of yours, Matt. Yeah, he's I've known Steve for a while, quite a while. He helps us with the business finance, uh, and he's helped a number of our customers get finance as well. Handy man to know. OK, uh, that's us about done and dusted. But first of all, discount tickets for the big show. This is the last week we're going to be doing this because the show is in about four weeks' time. We want you to get your tickets. Go onto the show website. What is it again, Matt? mcshow.co.uk And put the discount code in EX1. That's Echo x-ray and the number one ex1 you'll get a discount but if you want to win free tickets go to motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask matt and tell us your motorhome campervan or caravan or tent story we funnier is good <laughs> moving is fine we've had a few sad ones memorable is key so if you have a story a tale from your camping or outdoor leisure holiday we want to hear about it come and engage with us on the podcast and we will pick the best we will. You'll get two tickets, no accommodation, no travel. You've got to sort that out for yourself. So there's no com- point coming to us at the show. You're making uh, it sound rubbish. And moaning. It's not rubbish. It's fantastic. But we're just giving the tickets away. I'm just saying. Okay. Just in case you're thinking of turning up and staying at the... The, the worst the thing that could happen is they turn up and you're there. Um, you never know. I might still be anyway. Carry, we'll, carry we'll, your bags for you. We'll keep it a secret which days you're going to be on site, shall we? That's a good idea. If you are going to the show, come and see us. We're in the entrance to Hall 9. We are recreating this little studio and we will be recording podcasts won't we, from the show all week live we're going to be broadcasting live and Keith is going to join me for some of the show as well but yes we'll keep the days that you're there secret it's going to be great I was being measured up today by one of uh, Matt's minions uh, for the desk which is uh, uh, going to be uh, set up there at the, oh, I the thought picture. you meant for your tag <laughs> no no I thought he was I thought he was measuring me up for me coffin to be honest <laughs> it's going to be snug let's put it that way uh, so alright that's us about uh, done and dusted socials man how do people yeah. keep in and stay in touch get in touch on the website motorhomemat.co.uk we're the same on instagram motorhomemat.co.uk and you'll find us on facebook as well motorhomemat join us on youtube too where you can watch the podcast at motorhomemat.co.uk